go live. Oh, we're live. Shoot, I oh, God. I forgot oh. to do this. Oh, uh, it's a podcast called Between Two Slabs. They consume mass media. It seems so sad. It's the great curator and Merlin. They can't grow pubes, so they gotta wear a Merkin. They got no money, so I guess they gotta share. Just two nerds wishing they could grow body hair. Comics, cards, and toys, nothing that would interest you. It's the podcast that nobody listens to. All right, <laughs> brides and shine, curator army. It is Merlin and Dan, great curator for another wonderful live stream episode of between two slabs live from the great curator main cave studios all right let's yeah, just, thanks for having me again let's just make sure our sound we got we always got to do the sound check so i'm gonna wait till um adrian or mark or somebody gives us the thumbs up that the sound is good let us know guys Papa Jim. while we're doing this i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna decorate my little studio stage here Make sure everything looks good. What else can I put there? Hmm? How about McCracken? How's it hearing? Gramps is in the house. Check, check. You guys, you give give us around? give us a give us a thumbs up. Oh, you know what? I need my glasses. Oh, he I'm says gonna, okay. He I says it's know. good. Okay, good. Vintage Lord Canada. Michael says it's good. Okay, Merlin. Merlin is going to get his glasses. He's an old man, so he needs his glasses. Oh, shut up. Okay. I'm gonna set this up, trying to get the hey, best. I got some stuff for me too. Okay, <laughs> there we go. All right. Oh my god, I've got to like stay in the front of this. <laughs> well, you know, I, you're lucky I put this one up since you sold yours. I I, I should actually put this one. You did not sell it. No. How does how does Rob from AMG have it? It's called five on one. <laughs> what does that five mean? Fingers on. Oh, one. he didn't steal it. Come on. No, he did. <laughs> Yes, he did. Okay, so he says I'm taking this. Okay, all right, and you just you just let him have his way with you, I huh? Know you, <laughs> he owes me some grading. Uh, okay, there, I've got like six right now at AMG. Let's see how. That oh, is. do you? Oh, all, all, I brought all five them. to show you today too. I see. And the audience, because um, Dan always get loves it when I uh, I follow his trends. Yes. <laughs> I'm the trendsetter. Oh my god, that's gonna block my entire face. I, I am trendsetter. Okay, that's too good. That's too good. <laughs> Put it right here. Put it right there. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. No, that's too big. We'll put we'll this put Taylor right here. Nope. <laughs> okay. All right. It's too early for that. It's too early for that. Okay. Oh All right. Um, we got some interesting topics tonight to talk about, guys. We're gonna do the follow-up to the PSA acquisition of sgc right uh, a couple because we did that yeah. um, emergency yeah. uh, live stream last that, week that was right? when it was breaking news okay. um since then they put out a press release they kind of talked about it a little bit so we're going to do a little follow-up conversation love about it, that love it, love it. uh we're going to talk about uh you have some some items that i can kind of see a peek of yes. you've got some items for show and tell right I've got some interesting things Always. to show you so we're going to be doing that guys and then we're going to be talking about the uh coming shows this weekend right two big shows here in southern, in southern california, california that we're right. going to be talking about um you're going to be attending one of them well the show collector as a vendor right. i will be going as an attendee right so we'll be talking about that for you guys and then we'll get into the big topic of discussion tonight hobby doom scrolling and i will explain to you i know you're i know I you don't know what that is no, i already googled it okay before okay you I, go so i'm gonna I post it. i'm gonna tell you some thoughts that i've been having uh, in relation to that, I didn't know that's what it was called. Yes, and then, and then, uh, as always, guys, we will get to your comments at the end of the show. Um, if you have any pressing comments, throw us up a super chat sticker, and we will highlight it right away. You don't have to do that though. Um, if you can be patient, we will try to get to all the comments towards the end of the show, depending on how much time we have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Before we get into that, let me give a quick um, plug for our. Between two slabs t-shirts, guys, we have these available now, size large, um, extra large, and 2XL. 2XL is going to be delivered like sh it should have been delivered today, but it's going to be delivered this week. So we will have these in um, pretty much all the sizes that you guys need. We don't have any mediums, but I, I don't really know too many medium well, guys out there. A, medium, okay. a lot of our fans will have to be on those Olympics. So. Yes. 
Yeah, so uh, if you want one of these, just send me a DM and uh, we'll get you one of these uh, 30 bucks plus shipping on that. Um, sometimes I give these away though. Like I'm doing these mystery packages right now. So if you buy a mystery package from me, I'll throw it in the shirt. Free. Uh, I used to be an XL and now I'm down to a, uh, just a large now. I don't look in the shirt. It's 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 cutting out the gluten, guys. That's what happens. Okay. All right. Anything you want to plug before we get into no, uh, like you said, the news? We, you know, you kept me busy last week. We um, posted three right. videos for Between Two Slabs. We had the regular one on Tuesday, the emergency PSA uh, buying SGC, and then we had uh, Joe Davis of Got Baseball Cards when we were in Atlanta, going to Got Baseball Cards in Loganville, Georgia. That was posted on Saturday, correct? Mm -hmm. So if you haven't seen that, folks, check it out. It's a great video. We explore all through Got Baseball Cards. It's a very large store. We went to the back room. That's actually what it's titled as. We got into the back room. Yeah. So, so check it out. So like, can we talk about this real quick? Okay. Because I feel like this is, this is a um, developing idea that we're going to have, that we're going to manifest into something. So when we were in um austin we went to um the toy shop there it's called monkey see monkey do right. that video will hopefully come out maybe so, yes. very soon maybe this week maybe next yes. week um and we were walking around right and and we kind of made friends with the clerk there uh, her name's taylor mm -hmm. and she said that you know we were you know just kind of like saying hey what, what kind of cool stuff do you have can you show us this can you show us that and then i just kind of casually asked hey do you have anything cool in the back room because everybody knows that the best stuff is in the back the stuff that they don't <laughs> want to put out on display or they haven't had time to get to yet the good stuff is really in the back that people haven't had a chance to put their hands on yet yeah it was a crazier toy store in the back right? room than it was in the front yes yeah, so so she led us into the back room where we saw all these cool items and things like that i bought a whole bunch of stuff from them but it kind of got me thinking this could be the theme to a new show. Okay, here's my pitch. Here's my pitch. It's called What's in the Back Room? And our goal, our goal is to basically go into collectible stores, whether they're card stores, toy stores, comic stores, whatever. Try to go in there, try to smooth, try to like uh, charm the store clerk mm -hmm. and make our way to the back room somehow to see what kind of treasures we can get. That's so true. How does that sound for the premise that of a show? Good. I mean, even when we do the monkey see, monkey do, uh, show me the back room, we shot some stuff at what's it called? Crossroads Toys too. Yes. So we need to go back, revisit there again sometime this year and go into their back room because I bet it's going to be amazing as well. So I like this idea. Yes. So I think that's going to be, so that's what we've titled the first episode uh, that we showed uh, premiered last week where we went to got baseball cards mm -hmm. to meet with Joe Davis. What's in the back room. He did take us to the back room to, to go look at his stash and we saw some interesting things. So I think that's going to be the premise of this. If people like it, then we'll continue to do more of this stuff. If, if, Nobody watches this stuff, then maybe we'll change it up. But it's very, it's very yeah. interesting. So please yeah. check it out if you haven't watched it yet. Please hit a like button, subscribe, smash that bell button. It's on the curator's channel. So make sure we get some views and leave some comments. Yeah. So um, yeah, leave some comments, guys. Let us know because we want to do interesting, fun, interesting content that you guys like. We want to be entertaining as much as we can. I I don't necessarily want to do the same things that everybody else is doing. Right. You know what I mean? So I kind of want to be creative and change it up, but I need feedback from the viewers. So if you guys like this kind of stuff, let us know and we will we will try our best to I kind of go out there and do great it. Great that we go to these places and really explore their store. And I want y'all to feel like you're exploring with us. Yeah. Yeah. Because here in Southern California, we have dozens of stores that we can go to so oh, yes. it'd be easy but i have no problem traveling to a different state and checking out a store and, and doing that same kind of premise right because when we do these videos like i mean i know it seems like we just kind of put these videos together but actually we we have to plan it out if we don't really plan it out there's a lot of um you know awkward dead time things yeah, like what do we do next yeah so we we have to have almost like a um uh, okay. A plan to go in there okay we're gonna go in there we're gonna look for this we're gonna look for that we're gonna see if we can get to the back room we're gonna see if we can do a challenge we're gonna see if we can buy something we're gonna see if we can trade something so we're trying to figure out this format for for these videos 
So let us know, guys, in the feedback. If you like it, give us a, a like. You know, hit the like button. Uh, if you don't like it, leave some comments. If you really like it, leave some positive comments. And we read all that stuff. So we appreciate the support that you guys. And most give. importantly, the people that own the store and work at the store enjoy what they're doing. That's also yeah. a very important yeah. thing. So go check out that video, guys. We have that up. And then the next one will be the Austin Toy Store coming soon. And then at some point, we got to release that culture collision video because we got yes. some really interesting footage we we have some of that. Stuff. That's all coming up okay. soon. Uh, anything else you want to plug? Uh, no, that's that's it. Like I said, well, I'll be at Collecticon with a show locator this uh, Saturday and Sunday at the LA Convention Center. Well, let's, the band let's, let, let's wait for that because we're going to talk about that. That's okay, a separate sorry. section. One, one comment I want to get to real quick here let's is Carlos's uh, comment here. He's asking me how much the mystery packages oh. are. Which ones? Uh, the ones that I just make for people. So okay. let me just tell you this because a lot oh, of people, Star Wars one? yeah, a lot of people have been asking me about this. Um, so this is not something new that I've I've been doing. I just don't really advertise it. But um, from time to time, people will message me and they say, "Hey, I want to buy this from you. I want to buy that from you. What do you have, right? Or I want to start a collection. Which card should I buy?" Okay. And is rather than trying to sell them one individual card or whatever. I say, hey, you know, if you want to kind of start a cool collection or you want to explore this, uh, let me make you a mystery package. Basically a box that they don't know what's going to be in there. They just give me they give me a theme like in this last one I did is Star Wars. So they give me the Star Wars theme and then I put in a bunch of stuff. It can be uh, all cards. It can be uh, a mixture of cards, toys, comics or whatever. Just whatever cool stuff that I have uh in my inventory that i want to move that i think that they'll like mm -hmm. i'll put together this mystery package for them um and it's just something fun that i do i've been doing it for a couple of years now uh whenever somebody asks me and, and they're down to do it it requires a little bit of um chance on their end because they don't know what they're gonna get but i always try to over deliver i always try to give them more value than what they're actually paying for um so that's what i'm do been doing with the star wars stuff right, right. so to answer your question carlos the budget is dependent dependent on the person so it can be you know a minimum uh 60 maybe it could be 200 dollars. this last one the star wars one i did uh was quite healthy i don't want to tell the budget uh just in case the guy wants to keep it private but he gave me a very healthy budget so that's why i was able to give him all that all that stuff um so it just kind of depends so if you if you want to do a mystery package let me know i can do star wars i can do wrestling i can do marvel um ninja turtles gi joe oh, wow. transformers pretty much everything that i like that you guys see i could probably do something like that i can probably do a taylor swift one too for for anybody that wants it so just did send, you do it for denny too you said you got w i did i did okay. i did do it for denny um uh we just couldn't we couldn't make the content about it but i did one for denny where it was all wrestling and i gave him a bunch of crap you know, that he that I know he cherishes and he puts on his uh, top shelf of his mantle for displays uh, for sure. Uh, now, now, yeah. Are these uh, charity things or are you uh, charging money for them? Of course, I'm charging money. That's what the budget is for. <laughs> okay. So they have to give me a budget. I don't give them this. We don't we're, we don't run up any any so what's here. budget can use them consist of or like all different variations. Yeah, it could prices? be it could be anything. It could be as minimum 60 bucks. Okay. Um, up to whatever they want you know i've had i've had a guy give me a budget for a thousand bucks okay before uh, or 1200 bucks before you know so it just kind of depends um interestingly enough though like if 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 it's only cards cards are actually the most expensive thing if you gave me a budget for like 500 car 500 dollars, it could be a, just a handful of cards um but if you're open to other collectibles like toys comic books you know all sorts of other uh, interesting things right. then i could put more stuff in there okay uh so so you know it's just something fun that i like to do and then we make content about it and things like that so so you uh, could add like toys and music memorabilia and things like that too basically whatever i have as long as i don't have to source it because that's a different thing right uh, as long as i have it within my collection somehow i i just throw it in there you know okay. and i try i always try to um, pack the box as much as I can. I always try to deliver because I kind of have, I don't know. I feel, I feel like a sense of pressure when I do it because I don't want them to open it up and be like, Oh, this is a bunch of crap. He, <laughs> he, he, he took my money. Right. Um, so I always try to over deliver and just give them unique things. I try specifically to give things that you normally wouldn't buy, right. You wouldn't think about buying, 
But if somebody gave it to you, some oddball stuff. Yeah, you would like you don't go to the store looking for it, right? But if somebody gave it to you, you'd be like, "That's cool. Mm -hmm. I love that." Right? So it's just something fun that I like to do. I. I feel like it could become a thing. It could be. So I'm saying, do you have a goal with this? I want it to. Well, it could become like a new gimmick. You know what okay. I mean? Where I just make these mystery packages for people, and I make the content around it. Because I, I'll tell you where I got the idea. Um, I I watch a lot of uh, just weird content on TikTok, and I always see people that have snack warehouses, and they say, "Okay, this viewer um, has this budget of a hundred dollars." Let's see how many snacks we can give them. And they go around and they pick out all these different um, like uh, snacks from different countries and stuff like that. And it's just those videos, they they it's really interesting to watch those kind of things, right? <laughs> so that's what kind of what I want to evolve this into where I'm just picking out all these things from my showroom here and make fun content about it. And then the person gets a bunch of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just just something fun and different to do. So, mm -hmm. um, so to answer your question again, it, the budget depends on the person. I can work with anybody's budget at minimum sixty dollars or so, uh, but you know, up to whatever you're comfortable with. So this okay. will lead up to the uh, great curator um, uh, special packaging. Yes. Yeah, so packaging. okay. So okay. So this. So I, I guess you could say that this is a form of repacks. Yes. Right. But instead of like chasing something, you're just you're getting a total mystery, right? right? So it's not it's not a form of gambling where you're trying to chase the chase card. And you either you get so it. A lot of the repackers, you, know. you know, there's chase cards. There's certain chase cards you're going after. Yes. This you just don't know. This is just a big package. Yes. The, the the idea special. the idea is like when it when you were a kid, would would you ever go to like a party and you get like a gift bag? Yes. And and in that gift bag was a bunch of cool stuff. Oh yeah, I go to that when I go to these like movie and TV premieres. Yes. Get like sw swag. That's packs. what I want the feeling to be. Okay. I want you to I want you to feel like you're getting. Um, a cool gift bag and a bunch of random stuff. Um, and I, I even do that. Like I just threw a birthday party for my daughter right. and I, I, I gave gift bags to the adults of collectibles. And they liked it? Oh, they loved it. They loved it. I tell you this really funny story. Okay. So I had, I made, there was like five adults there, right? So I made five gift bags. Okay. And they had all sorts of stuff in there. Transformer cards, Marvel cards, you know, um, sports cards, all, you know, k-pop cards all sorts of stuff like that but one of them had a harry potter card in it okay yeah because i only had one harry potter card that i was gonna give away so i put it in there and i gave uh, uh these two guys one bag here one bag here and this guy's looking through it and he's like oh my god this stuff is awesome i love it um any chance there's any harry potter stuff in here because i'm a huge harry potter fan and i didn't know what was in the bags because it was random so i said one of these bags has a harry potter card in it right? Um, let's look for it. If I can find it in, an, in a bag, I'll just give it to you. So we started looking through all the bags that I hadn't given out yet. And the other guy had the bag that had the Harry Potter okay. card. And it's not like he's a collector or anything, right? He's just a, a normal dude. And he's yeah. looking through it. He had the same reaction. Oh, man, this is cool. I love this. It makes me feel like a kid again. And he said, I got the Harry Potter card. So I just I said, Oh, there it is. You guys want to trade? You want to give it to him? Or fight it out? You want to give it to him, or or do you want to? Do you want to trade for it? Right? I I was just trying to like facilitate this so that guy could get okay. that card that he wanted, and mind you, this was free stuff that I gave these guys, okay. and they're not collectors, so it's not like they were like looking for these things, right? But the guy goes like this, and I barely know him, so I can say this. He he looked at the card, and I said, "Hey, do you want to give it to him?" Yeah. You know, because it's not worth a lot of money. Can you just give it to him because he's a big Harry Potter fan, or yeah. do you want to trade for it? And he's like, he looked at me and he looked at the guy and he said, "No, it's oh, mine." Wow. And I was like, "Wow, oh, I could, I couldn't believe it." I literally just gave that guy car the card for free. It was not even worth that much, and the dude would not even give it to the other guy. You know what I mean? He right. would, he wouldn't be cool about it. So I just think that was kind of funny how these guys were acting like that, but um. But yeah, you know, it's just it's just something fun that we do. Okay, <laughs> maybe it becomes a thing. Maybe like maybe I start a new trend in a hobby where people are selling mystery boxes. That's what I'm saying. Are you going to bring me any to the Dallas Card Show? No, because because it, it's it's almost like the way that I do it. I kind of I customize it. 
Yes. Like I asked him questions. I said, who's your favorite character? What do you do for a living? You know, what did you collect as a kid? I try to get information and okay. I try to, I so, try to customize it for so them. These boxes have to be by appointment only kind of thing. Kind of because you know, yeah, yes. I'm not just giving them a talk. And have yeah. an interview with a person. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not just like grabbing a bunch of crap and throwing it in a box right. and shipping it off to them. I, I try to like customize it. So this is not something that I would pre-make and sell to people. Right. This is like something that I just do for fun. You know what I mean? And um, this last one that I did, like I put so much stuff in it that because his budget was pretty healthy, that it it doesn't even fit. Like it's right there. You can see it. It doesn't even oh, fit yeah. into one box. I had to use. <laughs> I had to use two boxes for two this. Box. It's a very special. Uh, yeah, because the shipping boxes. the shipping will be too crazy if I if That's I use huge. a if I use a bigger box than that the shipping will be too crazy. Oh, definitely. So I'm gonna lose money on the shipping anyways, but I don't care, dude. Okay. I just I just want to send the stuff out and and you know do something cool. But anyways, okay. So we got sidetracked there. Okay, let's okay. get into the uh, the topics of discussion tonight, which is the first one is going to be we're going to do the follow up okay. to the PSA acquisition of SGC. The okay. Follow up from last week. So if you guys didn't watch, we did a breaking news um, live stream like last Wednesday at like, at like ten thirty at night. Yeah, it was late. Um, and we still had like sixty viewers. Yeah, what we we were talking about basically we were just like um, having a fun speculation of of what was going to go on, you know. Uh oh, you know what? What I I just figured out how to go live on Instagram. <laughs> you just had a break part. Just oh now. my god! Why, I, what was it? Oh, oh my god! Okay. What happened? So every time I always put the stream <laughs> the stream key in there, yeah. and I assume that when we go live on Streamyard on YouTube, that it goes live to Instagram. Yeah. But there's a button that I have to click. <laughs> Yeah, we've been doing this for weeks, guys. For months, guys. We've been doing this for months. And oh boy, just last week I asked Adrian if he saw me live on Instagram, right. and he said he said no. No, he said no. And so this time I just kind of clicked the the <laughs> the Instagram tab, and there's a big button there that says go live. And I'm, well, I'm happy you were uh, able to multitask yes. and figure that out. So I just I I'm just hit. I just hit the button. I don't know if it comes in right now know, folks. or if it goes to the back uh, or to the front when we stream it. I think it's starting right now. Okay. Anyways, but we got a whole bunch hey, of people. Now we know. We got a whole bunch of people in there. So if you if you guys want the better view, go to YouTube. I think it's a better stream than the than Instagram. But yeah, plus Instagram only lasts an yeah. hour. It's yeah. Time limit. Okay, so we got that going. All right. So uh we had the discussion last week about PSA and SGC. Right. That discussion was more centered around like speculation. Speculation because it just happened. And yes. There's no like there's no information. News yet. Yes. Since then, um, I don't know if PSA made a press release, but SGC made a press release. They did, okay. And then uh, the president, Peter, I think his name Peter Steinberg, um, did a couple follow-up posts on Instagram, things like that. But basically, this is it. This is this is basically what we know now. Okay. At PSA and SGC will operate as separate grading entities. Okay. They're not going to merge. Um, PSA is not. One thing. Yeah, PSA is not going to absorb SGC. They are two separate things. They're going to be their own brand still. Yes, but they will be sharing. Uh, uh, supposedly, they'll be sharing resources, right? Which is um corporate resources okay. you know like okay. i think i think peter said that they're going to be sharing like um psa has like a fraud prevention team uh something like that or a fraud like a fake counterfeit team so they're going to be accessed to that type of resource they're going to be you know whatever other technologies like front office pretty yes much. but as far as sgc's brand their slabs their customer service everything that they do their office everything yeah. is going to stay the same for now um i i do imagine though I, that in the future there'll probably be some type of co consolidation you know it just makes sense that that you know if if they're paying for the same thing that they'll consolidate certain departments to you know save money or whatever it is um, but that's what we know now okay so which is kind of like what we thought mm -hmm. was going to happen um again there's not much news about that people are speculating that sgc cards will be worth um, closer to PSA cards. But what I think is what I think is an interesting, I saw somebody else did this. And you think that will happen? Well, I think that, I think so, okay? I think so, because- They think it's both be on the same level. Yes, because it's, it's, 
you know, the, what separates the um, the premium value that's added to a card from the grading company, the slab from from PSA, uh, Beckett, C, uh, what is it? CGC, CGC. SGC, yes. and all the other guys, Tag, and all those other right. guys. What separates it is the brand value, right? The brand value. PSA has per, the the best perceived brand value. That's why they get the highest premium on pretty much everything. But SGC, surprisingly, has the third most market share in the hobby in terms of grading. And they have probably the best reputation for grading vintage cards. Okay, right. That's why that, that Mickey Mantle was an SGC 9.5 that sold for whatever it sold for, $12 million. Whew. In fact, Gosh. somebody told me this. The three highest selling sports cards of all time yeah. are in SGC slabs. Really? It's the Mickey I Mantle, have not known. the Honus Wagner, and then there's some other card. I don't it was know. was a Honus Wagner, also an SGC. Yes. And then some other card, I don't know, probably a Babe Roof or something. I don't know. Oh, wow. Um, but those are the three highest selling uh, cards of all time, all in SGC slabs. So I, so here's what I think. I think that for modern cards, probably the SGC slabs are going to get closer to the PSA price, right? But I also think um, PSA vintage cards are going to get very close, if not, you know, if not the same as SGC. Okay, I think we're going to see a closer, you know, either SGC is going to come up or PSA is going to go down a little bit or whatever, whichever one is 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 there, because now people don't have to necessarily make make or think about when they're grading something. They don't have to make the choice of which company do I send it to to get the better premium value. Right. Because that's why they do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Most people will will grade with any company. Because they're thinking about what type of premium value right. I can that, get. That return on investment. Yes. If if I'm not going to get the huge premium value to warrant paying PSA fees, I'll send it to SGC. It's it's 15 bucks or whatever to grade it, quick turnaround time, whatever, right? Well, now I don't think, you know, if, if they consolidate their practices where, you know, a PSA 10 would be an SGC 10 right. or whatever, then... I don't think people have to make that choice. People will say, okay, if I want to grade my vintage card, I'm going to send it to SGC. Okay. Right. Because I know it's going to be uh, equivalent to PSA oh, and wow. SGC has a better, uh, maybe the better look with the, the black tuxedo. Oh, yes. Maybe they have a better reputation. I will send it to SGC for 15 bucks or whatever it costs. Mm -hmm. Okay. And since it's under the PSA brand, it should have a very comparable value. You know what I mean? So I think that's I think that's what's going to come out of this. Only time will tell. Um, obviously, uh, I think right now they're they probably not going to say that they're going to do anything because it would just freak out the entire hobby. But over the course of maybe the next over the course of this year, I, I do think that they'll start to implement some changes because that always happens. Oh wow, that always happens, right? So any thoughts on your end? And you also think just like like regular cards too for SGC that don't sell as high as the PSE regular cards in a, in a PSA slab, they'll uh, kind of go up to meet the same PSA level from SGC. I feel you like, agree? I mean, that's what makes sense. But you know what? In the hobby, nothing really makes sense. It, <laughs> no. It's all based off of people's preference, right? And, and the narrative that gets pushed. So it depends on how much... Maybe maybe PSA puts their marketing brand behind SGC and people see SGC as more comparable to PSA. Maybe they work with influencers and they start sending their stuff to SGC. You see more SGC slabs out there. I don't know. And why do you think PSA did this? Did they do it because they saw how well SGC was doing and they were like, they're doing very good. They're a very good company. Let's just, let's just buy them out or what? Because they're going to make a profit for us. And we can also use their their ideas. I think there's three reasons. Okay. Off the top of my head, there's three reasons. Okay, so when we look at the top four grading companies, um, based on the data from I think Gemrate, where they talk about market share, uh, I think they said that PSA gets like seventy eight percent, CGC gets ten percent, which I think is mostly um, like Pokemon cards, right, like right, right. TCG stuff. So I don't even know if that counts. Um, SGC has 7% and Beckett has like 
Okay, so let's mm. just use those four companies. Everybody else, cool. all the other guys, tag HGA. They're not even in the in the conversation. Okay, <laughs> they're like all one percent. Yeah, they're not even in the conversation. So when you look at that, right? For PSA, if you're PSA, if you're collectors, which owns PSA, if you're Nat Turner, which is the the um, you know the, the the guy who's trying to have a monopoly over the entire hobby, right? Right. You're looking at this. You're looking at strategically what can you do? Can you buy Beckett? Maybe you could buy Beckett, okay? But they only have four percent, and the name is probably makes it very expensive. Plus you oh, get yeah. plus you get everything else that Beckett does, which maybe they don't want to do. You get Beckett does um, comic books. They do, they do v- comic books as well. VHS tapes, and they do all this other stuff, right? But they don't do yeah. photos anymore, do they? I think they do photos. They still do yes, photos. they do photos, right? And so, the, uh, the lobby cards or whatever. And all that stuff. Smaller? Okay. So, you know, maybe you don't want to absorb all that. Okay? Maybe there's too much baggage there. Okay. Plus, Beckett is seen as the rival, and you're so far ahead of Beckett right now that maybe you just keep them there as, like, the little brother so that, so that you know, you have something to compare yourself to. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Do you go after CGC? CGC may only have 10% of the market share, but they're a huge company. Yes. They're probably yes. as big as PSA, if not bigger, because they're they're owned mostly they they're owned by like a private equity firm, I think BlackRock or something. Uh, I think Michael Rubin owns a, a piece of that company somehow. Uh, they're owned by they've got big money behind them. They've got multiple grading services for video games, VHS tapes, Coins. Oh, CGC does video games, yes. coins, comic magazine. books, wow. yeah, all sorts of books, all right. sorts of other crap. And just regular magazines too. Yeah, right? yeah. So they're again, you know, they come with a lot of baggage. They're probably super expensive, and they're just they're probably they don't need money. They don't need money from PSA. No, so they they're do. not even for sale. Okay, and they're based out of Florida too, like SGC. Yes, correct? yes. Then you have SGC. SGC only does cards, right? Um, maybe like big cards or something like that, but they don't really do anything else. Um, they're comparable. They're probably not as expensive as the other two companies. They have the third most market share. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they're based on the e- uh, the East Coast, mm-hmm. right? They're, their main headquarters on the East Coast. And they've shown the most, the most um, growth in the pandemic compared to the other companies. Mm. Okay. So I think that just makes the most sense. They're probably they're and they're probably open to an acquisition, mm-hmm. where the other two companies probably are not even open to an acquisition, at all, right? So I think everything just kind of aligned, and they said, and PSA said, you know what? We can just absorb these guys. We'll have two brands under an umbrella, under collectors collectors umbrella. Um, we'll basically corner the market with eighty five percent of the market share. We'll have offices on two coast, West Coast, East Coast. You know, it makes sense, right? right? So I think that's probably the reason why they did that, you know, as opposed to the other guys. But you don't think like people who want their cards great about PSA are going to ship them to the SGC office in Southern Florida? That, that, yeah, they right. might do that. Okay, they Maybe might do that. Right. Yeah, because you know, like right now, PSA has two offices in Santa Ana and New Jersey, right? And they're opening satellite offices all over the world mm-hmm. in, in in like Japan and. I think they're opening one in Dubai and some other crap. You Dubai, know, really? yeah, yeah. Know Dubai was yeah. In the cards. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh wow. You paid. You'd be surprised. They're they're opening hobby shops. Uh, CGC's doing something out there, like a really? submission center. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we got to do a show in Dubai one day. I don't know. I don't know about that, but <laughs> but we'll see, right? Um, but yeah, so it makes sense. So like maybe that's just another hub for them. You know what I mean? Uh, that they can collect stuff and then they can just it, logistically it might make more sense. I don't know. You know what I mean? Uh, but I think that's kind of like all everything that's going to happen there. I think, again, we kind of talked about this last time, but now other people are starting to talk about this is what is the the after effect of this merger? Yeah. What is right. It? Now that PSA is basically solidified their domination of the of the grading space. Right. What does the other big player in the hobby do? There's only two. There's there's only two giants. Okay. Right. There's Nat Turner and Collectors, and then there's Michael Rubin and Fanatics. Right. Godzilla, King Kong. All right. Which oh, one is God. which? I don't know. Oh, right. King Kong. So 
you know, you had Godzilla. Let's just say Nat Turner's Godzilla. Okay. okay. And then you have Michael Rubin's King Kong. You got, yeah. you see what Godzilla did. All right. Now, what does King Kong do? Right. What does he do? Because, okay, wait a minute. Yeah. because before the next started acquiring everything, there was always that rumor that they were, were going to acquire or had already acquired CGC and CGC was going to um, slab fanatic cards. Like pre, I never heard that one. I heard that when it first all happened. Yeah, that was the rumor. I never heard that one. I I have heard that they wanted to get into grading. Yes, for a while now. Um, this is not this is not related to grading, but this may have been the catalyst for it when uh, PWCC suddenly became available. I heard that Nat Turner. Right. Yes, the, the initial rumor was Nat Turner was going to make a play on it. Yes, I remember we were at Dallas a trade night. And I got a word from somebody on the inside saying Nat Turner is going to make a play on PWCC. That was going to be the breaking news. And yeah. then the, like the next day, Michael Rubin swoops in there and buys up PWCC, which was crazy. But that could have been like, that could have been like a, a chess move. And then Nat Turner's like, you son of a bitch. How yeah. dare you? You think you got more money than me? He probably does though. Um, okay. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go out and I'm going to acquire SGC. Okay. So SGC is off the table now. All right. That only leaves. So that only leaves really Beckett or CGC. Michael Rubin, I, I just, it doesn't make sense for them to buy CGC because they're so big. Right. So the other one is, is Beckett. And I think that would be very, very mm -hmm. interesting play if, if um, Fanatics, Michael Rubin, were to acquire Beckett and turn them around. Mm -hmm. I think if they did that, Beckett would be just as big as PSA. Yeah. Under the right management, under with the right marketing and with the established history, the brand name and everything that they that they have. Um, I think that would be a very, very interesting play, very beneficial for people in the hobby to kind of bring Beckett back up to prominence. Because right now, I think they're owned by like some private equity firm that doesn't know anything about the hobby i don't think they know anything about the hobby they just know what they own yeah which is they don't know anything about it yeah they which is why they're having such a tough time they probably have people that work for them that are trying really hard to um keep the ship afloat but they're probably very limited on their resources or authority or something like that be just because they haven't been able to do anything you know what i mean um so that's kind of like the whole thing uh, so it'll be interesting to see what will happen. I do think that this is going to prompt some type of response, maybe even this year, I think. Oh, really? Because because I've been thinking about this for a while, that in the hobby space, there's going to be a lot of consolidation. You know, it's in 2020 to 2022, uh, there was tremendous growth, tremendous growth. Then in 2023, you saw really big players come in, like right. Fanatics. Fanatics change exchange game. Now, I think in this year and next year, you're going to see consolidation between the companies, mm. right? People, uh, companies are either going to go out of business, they're either going to merge with each other, or they're going to get, um, in, you know, outside venture capital funding or something like that and be able to scale up and grow, you know? So I think that's, you know, that, that, that's a possibility this year. Any thoughts before we move on? No, no, no. I'm gonna be curious to see what happens. Like you said, the rest of the year. I mean, it's only the uh, well, we're the third month in now in March, so we've got uh, nine more months. See what happens in yeah. 2024. So I'm excited to see what happens with everything. Okay, cool. All right, let's talk about the shows that are going on this weekend. Okay. We got here in Southern California. We got two main shows. We've got um, the Del Mar. Uh, Union Marketplace, Marketplace show, which is in Del Mar, California. They've been doing this for two years now. On that, yeah, those guys. The Del Mar race. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna get into that real quick. Um, but the other show is gonna be CollectorCon in Los Angeles. They moved it from Long Beach to now. Uh, yes. Center. Yeah. So let's let's talk about uh, CollectorCon. You're you're gonna be going there as a vendor. I will be going my first time there. I'll be there with Donald, the show locator. We're set up on the left side facing stage. Um, so we're on the left side of the stage. You know what this show is about. Right. Uh, pretty much, yes. So you know the show is mainly focused on like TCG stuff. Correct. Yes. Okay. So what are you bringing? I'm I'm just bringing pop culture stuff, man, because I feel like these people who are gonna be there, you're gonna love pop culture stuff. 
Um, cards, so, photos? Uh, everything, yes. Music? Cards, photo, music, memorabilia, everything. Posters. I've got some like signed Tim and Eric posters that I want to give. And I feel like this crowd is that kind of crowd mm -hmm. for it. So I'll want to see um, Test of Waters here. Okay. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Uh, I'm choosing not to go set up because yeah. go, where it's at, at in LA, in downtown LA, for me to get there is a pain in the ass. Yeah. So good to send me for the other side. It only took me two and a half hours to get here tonight. It was horrible. So I know how it is for Dan when he has to come up to my neck of the woods. Like the driving wouldn't even bother me as much yeah. as the parking does. It's the parking that's even Because you like if you want to park anywhere close to the convention center, it's like 50 bucks to park. Okay. What? And then, you know, and, and that's if you can even get a spot. Most of them are already fill up. So last time I went there for um uh LA Comic Con, I had to park like a mile away. Um in an outside parking garage under a bridge, mm -hmm. super shady. And I had to walk through like homeless encampments to get to the convention center. Luckily it is in the daytime, but I would not put myself through that again. And I definitely want to take my family through that because LA is too crazy. Right now. So that's why I'm not going because <laughs> logistically it's just a pain in the ass. Do you uh, fix me again? I need to do the face here and then you know how you remove me from it. What do you want me to do? It's Merlin, your mic is distant. Hold on, and then make that one uh, me again here. Sorry. Where is it? Do I? Oh, solo layout, right? It's right here. Sorry. There we go. Okay. How's, okay. how's that? Can you hear it now? Give us the thumbs up if the, if the sound is good. I don't know. Okay. Who knows? Sorry. We'll just have to make it work, guys. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, so then the next show is the Del Mar show. The which Del is, Mar. No, yes. Yeah, which is down south. The Del Mar of, racetracks yeah. north of San Diego. Yeah, down south, kind of towards uh, San Diego. This show is interesting because um, they've been doing it for a few years, and they scaled up really quick with that show. They did. Yes. And um, they, I feel, I feel for those guys, right? Because I can tell that they're – it seems like everybody that, that created a show. They, they try so hard. Yeah, everybody that created a show did really well. You know, uh, Bourbon Card Show, uh, Dallas Card Show, uh, whatever, uh, Culture Collision, Nashville, whatever. All these promoters that started card shows just seem like, it seems like they're just printing money. You know, it's so easy for them to, to do it, right? Well, maybe it's the location. Maybe. But these guys, um, Wiley and Alex, they started the Del yeah, Mar show. So super nice guy. And it, start, nice. it started off strong, but I can tell that they've been, you know, they've been trying to find their 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 identity as a show in the last year or so. And I actually thought that that show was gonna um, close down last year. I, I thought, thought so too. I thought they said it was gonna be their last one. Yeah, they told me they're still doing it. They told me that, you know, they were gonna. Um, change up the business model because it wasn't working for them to, to rent out that gigantic space. Right. Or it was, which is like a horse barn or something like that. No, 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 it is. It's, it's, it's right into the racetracks. Race track. It's exactly yeah. what it is. It's a horse barn. Yeah. So um, they told me that they were going to thinking about doing something smaller. And I said, I think that's a good idea. I thought it was a much better idea. And then they came back and said, fuck it. We're going to do it again. You know, we're back. So I, I really hope that that show does well. I, I like those guys. I, I think that and the tables went up to like six or seven hundred dollars. Yeah, there's 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 some problems with that show. For me personally, there's some problems, and that's why I don't go set up as a vendor there. And there's no cheap hotels near there. Yeah, just logistically for me, it's difficult to go down there just because the location. Like driving down there is a pain in the ass. Um, it's expensive because it's like a beach city. Everything is expensive. Oh, yeah. Lodging, and they have, like, the fair there and yeah. all the other stuff. Lodging is expensive. And Concerts. Then, um, the, uh, the crowd there, my inventory doesn't work. Although I did have the biggest sale ever, which is the Kurosawa sale. At, at, that, at one. that show with um, DAPS, right? So I have to give them credit for that. You, you know, know, I went last year by myself this time last year to it. I only went for one day. And I had the best sales ever. Yeah, but why did you leave? Huh? Why did you leave? 
because well, we did it, three day show. Because I already told us. Well, I was there Friday night and then Saturday all day, but I needed to get back. So I had something going on Sunday. Yeah. So it's it's just a difficult show for us to be at, but I hope that they will do well. I yeah, I'll, 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 I'll probably go. You know, because since I'm not going to sit up at anything, I'll probably I'll have a job visit to you, dude. It's like an hour even, and a half. Even for you, down way down here, not yeah. just another hour yeah. and a half. Like an hour and a half. Just traffic longer. It's it, it's a pain. Oh, oh I don't know. Far away, you. Um, but that's just where so, But maybe I'll go there, yeah, on Saturday, and then I'll come to, or maybe I'll like to come on Saturday and I'll go to Del Mar on Saturday or something like that. Okay, you know. We'll see, but um, I'm I'm rooting for those guys. I really want them to. Right, right. So if you guys are in the area, so nice if you guys are in the area, and you want a like a, a more hard focused like sports car and other collectibles, you go down to uh, Del Mar. If you want like PCG stuff and toys and things like that, you go up to Collecticon. Uh, so a lot of cool stuff going on this weekend. And but out. isn't Collecticon exactly what it says? Collecticon is it just a lot of like? I feel like it's more pop culture I feel stuff. Like it's, I don't even describe it as pop culture. I would say it's like a TCG focused show. Pokemon. Because now they have because uh, show locator told me they have an entire area now dedicated to the sports cards. I don't know. I haven't been. I didn't see that when I went last year. I went because I went last year and I went yeah. with you. Yeah. Right, we were there last year, and it was almost all Pokemon and anime stuff. Yeah, and Vanilla Ice was performing. Yeah, so honestly, I wasn't that impressed. That's why I haven't been back to ColecoCon. Um, but I don't know. Maybe I could be wrong. We'll see what happens. I thought it was a lot of K-pop too. Probably, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought like anime stuff, you know? Yeah, it's, yeah, anime it's stuff. Like, it's like Asian themed artists, things, yes. you know? Which is cool, but I don't think I don't see a heavy sports presence there. Or anything like that. Not that I care. I mean, we don't even do that. Well, they're obviously moving to a bigger venue. Yeah, yeah. Because they need bigger space. That's interesting. Yeah. So we'll it'd, be, it'll it'll be interesting to see. Uh, we'll go. I mean, I'll, yeah. I'll go and I'll see what it is. I'll give you big for us. We'll, okay. We'll report on it. You know. Um, so that's what we have going on this weekend in SoCal. Anything else? You no. And then we've got uh, Dallas uh, next week. That's right. We'll have Dallas next week. Already right, coming back up. Yeah, we'll save that conversation for next weekend on Tuesday, and then uh, we'll. And then we'll tell you guys about that. Book. So it's going to be a busy couple of weeks for us. One thing I want to talk about before we get into our, our, our last topic here, What's our, our main topic, is I've had this idea. Okay. Okay. It's not really a new idea, but I think that it needs to be um, kind of uh, tailored for sports stars. Okay. okay. So you ever, have you ever heard of a jewelry state exchange? Yes. Do you know what that is? Is it kind of like a, a palm thing or what? Not really. Okay. So, um, and I just recently learned this myself. Okay. So you you may walk around or you may drive around your city and you'll see like a big building that says jewelry exchange. Yeah, I've seen a lot of those. And yes. you go into the jewelry exchange building and there'll be um, stalls, multiple stalls. Everybody's selling jewelry in there. Okay. okay. And I never like, like a vendor kind of thing? Yes. And I never knew that they were... They are not under one business. They're all different vendors. It's like, oh, okay. They just want me to. It's just like it's like a jewelry fair. Yes, but it's it's basically everybody brings a stall inside a big building, and it's open all the time. It's not like once a week, whatever. It's open all the time. It's kind of like Frankenstein's for jewelry. Yes, and that's what Frankenstein's is. Yes, Frankenstein's is a hobby exchange. exchange. Yes, but it's only open two days a week or three days a week. Yeah, three, I think three or four. Right? Yeah. But basically, you, you buy a stall, and that's kind of like what a car show is. Car shows, you buy a table, and right. somebody rents a little more temporary. Somebody makes a, a place, and you buy a table, and uh, you know, it's like once a month or once every couple months or whatever, right? But I was thinking, like, what if, like, because consumers exchange do really well. They're always buying and selling stuff. I watch people's content on it all the time. <laughs> what if. You're going down that rabbit hole. What if somebody made a hobby exchange, you know, just like Frankenstein, but yeah, and and a little bit, you know, more accessible. Frankenstein is almost too big, you know. It's like it's, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. A, you know, to go there. Sometimes the parking's ridiculous, things like that. Oh my god, I've seen people's tires get jacked from Frankenstein's yeah. parking lot. Yeah, so and you know, like the first time going, I saw this. You ever been to an antique mall? 
And Peak Mall is the same thing. No, but I know of it. Yes. They, they went to rent a huge space and they sell stalls for antique vendors. And you, you rent the stall and you put up one stuff. Just like the, the flea market. Yeah. Market. Yeah. So, and they open every day. Right. And, oh, wow. and you don't even have to be there because the person that runs the, the whole place, they will do the transactions. You essentially just set up your stall. People will grab the stuff and then they, Oh, okay. I thought it was gonna be like like when I go to Frankenstein. Some people just don't want to work that day, so they lock up yeah. their their vendor area. Yeah, because because it's it, that's like more of an exchange. Right. But with like an antique mall, there's like someone else go in there and take your stuff. There's one point of sale, basically. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's what they do. So I was gotcha. thinking like this could be an interesting evolution because we're kind of already doing, it, right? We've seen the the model work with Frankenstein's where it's like three days a week. Mm -hmm. Then we've seen it work with car shows, right? But can it evolve? Can this hobby exchange idea evolve to an everyday thing? Right. Right? Like everybody wants to have their own card store, but not everybody can manage a card store, an entire, entire store. store. So maybe, maybe they could have a booth. I could manage it for sure. Right? right? If I had the chance, if I, if I wanted to, I mean, I've been actually trying to get into cards for years, but the waiting list is crazy. That, really? Yeah, you have to wait. You literally have to wait for people to die to, oh, get, them, to get their spot. That's a hell of a wait list. It is. It is crazy. So, but I was thinking, like, you know, could there be a business model where I find a warehouse or I find a really nice building, or something like that, and then put stalls in there? I think I could. I think I could rent those. Because Frankenstein's is pretty much an old Sam's Club, correct? It's like yes, yeah, yeah, it's an old yeah. Sam's Club warehouse. Yeah. So we can find like a Costco warehouse. It doesn't, warehouse. To, it doesn't have to be that big. I don't want that. It's no, too big for you. Because jewelry exchanges are not typically not that big. Okay. Right? Um, so, so we can. So how many vendor spots do you think you would uh, want to have oh, in this? I don't know. Maybe like 20, 30. Okay. Something like that. Maybe 40. I don't know. Depending on the size. You know that place, Diamond yeah. 9? Yeah. That guy. Yeah. That guy. That's, that's where I started. Yeah, so Diamond Nine, he's got the perfect spot for a hobby. Team. He's never done it that way. He, he just does his card shows. Yes. So he does you his card pull out the tables and the chairs yeah, and set up. And, yeah, and I think he does that because he is the main vendor. So he doesn't necessarily want the competition. He just he does the card show and he makes money doing that stuff. But I was thinking, like, what if I, cause I like real estate, right? What if I just want to be uh, the, the owner, the landlord? All right, and I just like, I just yeah, think so. I think so. So that might be, you know, that might be an idea that I try to develop. I don't know. I just thought about it. It's something that I looked up. The other Would way. you have people like showing up for like doing autographs, something like that, like special guests? Uh, no. Well, I don't know. It depends. Probably not. It depends. Successful one. Yeah, it depends. Yeah, you know. Um, I did see that uh, our good friend John Holt, big supporter of the channel here, gave us a super chat sticker. <laughs> Thank John you, John. Yes. Give yeah, me a two liter Coca Cola. And he gave us a nice little comment here. John says, Let's have a great show, gentlemen. I hope it's good. I hope you can hear it. Appreciate it, John. Everybody says the camera's looking good, but I'm not, you know, what I'm doing, I'm not putting the camera on um, Wi Fi. Oh, what is it? On your phone? Yeah, because I feel like it's just. Interesting. It's okay. framing up the uh, Wi Fi. Because that's some. Issues I have when I'm editing at home, mm -hmm. and then Maria tries to get on to uh, cable. Okay. Uh, it, it was crazy. Okay. Well, we appreciate that, John. John, John is like our biggest uh, supporter. He is single-handedly oh, yeah. single keeping this this uh, little podcast afloat. <laughs> so thank you, John. We appreciate it. Yeah, we thank you so much. Like like John, thank you, John. We got to get John sure at, at some point. So if there were more lamps like John Hall, yes. we wouldn't need sheep herders. Yes. We? Yes. Okay, so that uh, let's, let's just kind of, that was just like a little side tangent oh, topic. I, I, I don't want to get into. Into. Let's get into the main topic of discussion tonight. Okay. Is there anything else we need to talk about? Do you uh, want to do the show and tell? Let's no, do the show and tell now. Let's do the show and tell is before comments, right? No, no let's, let's do it now. Okay. Let's okay. write some links, okay? okay? You show There's me first, and then I'll save mine for later. You show me your stuff. Oh, shit. That's what he always says. <laughs> you, so show, you show me yours, I'll show you mine. So let me show my notes. I thought they all came in a white box. I no, they're, they're different colors. colors. They're different colors. A little red box. So like, that's not big and white like Dan's is. That's orange. Well, it is orange? Yes, you can tell the white guys. That's, not, that's, that's red. Orange. It's supposed to look like a Nike box. I thought it was a little red. Oh, my God. Well, whatever. So you see the thing over here? 
it says number one draft pick, yeah. whatever. I'll add on there. And then it says, well, which way is it? This way? Simple? Yes. It's that way, folks. And uh, you open it up, and it does come with a little glove, like Dan says. Comes a little coin, a little certificate here that I have. It has nice piggy banks. And then you pull the ice little bag out here, a little velvet bag. And this is my first one I've actually purchased. The first piggy bag. I finally got one. It always sold out. Time I get it, so I go manually check. And uh, this is beautiful because I love music. That's Mac Miller holding it. Uh, of course, this is most show. It's a draft number one. And I guess that's his uh, when he was born, 1992, and died in 2018. Gone but not forgotten. Great singer. So that's why I got my first Mac Miller pop culture. So Piggy Banks does not only sports, but a lot of pop culture too. Now, did you, you have to name drop me to get that? Maybe. <laughs> you um, should go visit his studio sometime. It sounded I'll like it was amazing. You know what? And he was so happy that I finally got one that he's like, good. He's like, and he, he knew who you were. Yes, he did. Yeah. He's like, I'm so glad you finally were able to buy one from me because I know you've been wanting to get one. And he shipped it out super fast. I had it within like two you days. Could, you could probably flip that for like 500 bucks. Easy. I'm, I'm sure. I want to try to. Don't let it. him know about that because he'll get mad at you. Yeah, I won't do that. <laughs> you didn't even hear that. And then music wise, I'm going to send this in to okay. get it authenticated by AMG, which is Audio Media Greeting, correct? Yes. And this is a CD uh, box set. Promo box set number cell, but always makes this even more special. This is from I think right now, Black Pink. Hey, autographed. Look at this, folks. Oh wow! I got like all four members, and it's still still, and they signed it in Soy Ink. It even says here, it even says on the box. Let me see that. So I'm always scared about these things because I don't know Let's if they're see. real. Well, I'm not so JSA always takes the autographs for AMG. So I'm going to send that in to get uh, slapped, and it's really pretty. Like I went, I did a lot of research on what Dan was doing, and I was like, okay, how can I make this uh, pretty hot? Very cool. But I'll take this first collecting con with me just see how it does roll. Dude, I think you'll sell it at collector con easy. Yeah, easy if you have a price right. But this know? was definitely a part of all this in Korea, Dan. Well, I'll sell it for $5,000. I'm sure. See, <laughs> typical Merlin. <laughs> typical I'm Merlin, kidding. okay? I'm buy, buy something I'm for 10 bucks, $5,000. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> and somehow, I'm sure you'll sell it at some at some point at that price. And I'm sure, I'm sure somehow I'm going to get the blade for it. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> They're going to make a video about I'll me say, ripping people off. Curator made me do it. Curator made me do because it. Curator was ripping people off through Merlin. He's got Merlin do his dirty work. Yep. Yep. All right, cool. Uh, anything else you want to show off? Not just me. Okay. All right. Let me show you some stuff of mine here, okay? Let's do it. Since we're, since we're showing. Just Dan, I got a follow suit. I'm going to go get this great little AMG. And I, I got my first piggy bank. So um, I'm happy. He's got, he's giving me the bug to all these things. Anybody so, that's uh, watching, anybody that's I'm been watching man. at this point, Sweet. okay, I'm telling you. What's up? There's gonna be room to get. There's gonna be an AMG Gold Rush at some point. You think so? Yes. Well, yes. I'm seeing like um, Steve Oak. You're doing a lot of posts with his yes. AMG since he's a majority so, owner. So if you're gonna get into it, now's the time to get in early because it's still at the very beginning stages before before it becomes oversaturated and you know harder to turn a profit doing these things. But get in now before before. It's mm -hmm. Yeah, I even have a 12 inch picture disc of Kate Bush's Running Up the Hill from 1986. That's an original that I'm sending. I actually own that for like two years now before the song got big from Stranger Things. So I'm going to get it slapped as well. Okay. So, a couple of things I want to show off. Let's there. do it. I'm not going to show everything off because there's too well, much here. This in G Box? What is this? No, it's not in G Box. Is this your mystery box? <laughs> this, is, this is a. Box that I got from check this out. I got it this today from Heritage Auction. I won um, a bunch of items. Oh, you want yeah, some stuff? I, I did on their GI Joe Focus auction. 
Do you believe that? Okay, and then how do you feel? Do you feel like it was a, a buyer's market for these products or a seller's market? Do you think the seller did well? Or the buyer's it's a seller's better? market. It's, it's a well. seller's market for sure because you know you're paying up for these things. Um, but I, I personally really like the things that I bought. So I get a lot of um, value from that. Right. And I also think that they will do well in the future as these things become more coveted. So you're like, gonna buy and hold for a while. Uh, yeah, for a while. You know, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But, but basically, I spent three thousand dollars on GI Joe's guys. Three thousand dollars on GI Joe's. Okay. Um, I am not going to show you everything because I need a reel about it, but I'm just going to show you a couple of things that I really like here. So this is a beachhead, okay? Uh, graded beachhead, AFA graded. AFA is the, uh, the grading company. Yeah, AFA is the main grading company for toys. So this is an e, uh, AFA eighty plus. Beachhead is just one of my favorite figures growing up as a kid. I still have my childhood Beachhead figure out and there. Beachhead is a character from G.I. Joe. Yes. One of this one right here. Yeah, real badass character. He's a ranger. Yes. Another one that I really love as a kid is this one. This is Low Light. He's the sniper. This is an AFA 80. Mm -hmm. uh, 85 plus. 85 plus for Low Light here. All right. You can see that. Where's the, the right range on there? Okay. Well, down, oh yeah, wow. Yeah. Okay. So that's how they do it down so below. I actually for the first time I submitted figures to, to AFA. I just submitted a couple weeks ago. They're getting graded right now. So here's how they do it. They have two options. They do a clear label where it's on the top, like uh like okay, PSA. that way, right, right. And then they do a hidden label where it's right here. Um so I like this one just because it, I just I just think it's cooler when the label's not on top. Do you think most people do it this way? Um, from what I've seen, yes. Okay. From what I've seen, yes. Okay. Yeah, that one's good. And then there, there's another one. Another one of my favorite figures with the kid. This is a Crimson Guard, the FA 80, right there. I just thought these guys were so badass. And I had a whole bunch of them when I was a kid. So happy to get that. Oh, Cobra Elite Trooper. You're right. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. From 1986. This is a popular G.I. Joe yeah. year. So one thing I, I, I'll I, tell you about this. For anybody that wants to create toys, especially the G.I. Joe ones, they can be fragile inside yeah, the case. I'm sure, right? Even though they're encapsulated in the acrylic. They still move around. The figure itself is held together by a rubber band. So if you're like... If you like shake it or it gets, you know, you it, you still if it gets it tossed around during uh, shipping, keep it break inside and you're screwed because you don't want to open it, right? It just, <laughs> but you will lose value if that happens. So, something to think about when you're bringing toys. Other toys don't really have that problem, like these X Men. They don't have rubber bands or anything inside of them, so you're not going to have issues with that. But the GI Joe's are a little more stable. Yeah, GI Joe's in particular are very fragile. Um, there's two other figures in here. That I got graded. I'm not going to show you that because you know they're just like lesser known figures. But here are two, two figures that are not graded. But I'm going to send into uh, AFA to get graded. And these are out of card. Yes, these these are mail in. This is a mail in. Oh, that's why mail in. Uh, still in the bag, Ninja Viper. That I'm going to send it to uh, AFA to get graded. And I got one of these, and I got the other one is a, a Steel Brigade figure. I'm not even going to show that. I just show that in my okay. <laughs> But just some, some cool stuff, you know, trying to mix up um, the collectibles a little bit. And then... Uh, Do these hair juice stickers take, come off easily? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll take off I'll take off the, the plastic, and then you will be clear just like this. Oh, you know? okay. That's just how they shoot. Like that. Um, so I got that. And then the other big thing that I got in the mail is, if you remember last week, I was telling you that I was um, doing a deal off yes. of a, 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 a message board. What do you got? The, the sketchy message board. Right. Right. Well, I'm, I'm happy to report that I did get the item. So okay. The guy did not scam me. Um, it came. He was legit. Yes. And here it is. It is, it an, is an original, original piece of art from Ooh. Oh, I know that okay. one. X Men. Not X Men, but from Marvel Masterpieces. Okay. This yes. is this is the 1992 Marvel Masterpiece. Um, uh, Cyclops. Yes. So this is this is not the actual original artwork from 1992. Um, last year, oh, really? the artist, his name is Joe Justo. Yes. Last year, he created a uh, Kickstarter campaign for his 30th anniversary to commemorate the 1992 set. Gotcha. And as part of that Kickstarter campaign, he said the first like whatever hundred people or whatever 
um, will get a recreation of the card art. Okay, so that's what he did. Yeah, I have it right here. So this is the he redid it. Yeah, he redid every single card. Yeah, and he wow. made, it, made it as an incentive for uh, people who wanted to uh, order the book from him. So um, this is where was the stuff being sold on? Like Kickstarter. 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 Well, Kickstarter yeah, okay. and it sold out within an hour. I missed out, unfortunately. Um, they sold. They started off at twenty five hundred dollars, and they sold out, you know, within an hour. So I missed out. But I was able to acquire this one, and it's a, it's a little bit better because a lot of people it was totally random. You couldn't pick what character you wanted to get. Oh, really? So some people got like Captain America. Some people got the man or or the leader or, or you know the Mandarin, just junk characters that nobody wants. So oh, I, I paid a little bit more to get this, but I got a character that I want for this. I am actually trying to put together an entire oh, yeah, set. That's how we get started. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Yeah. Oh God! So I'm I'm trying to put together an entire PSA set of this so that I can be number one on the registry. I've got my Lord, sheet. Mercy. I'm trying to collect um, many of these original art pieces as I can. I want to be known as the 1992 Marvel masterpiece um, expert and the best super collector in the world. So that's like a long term goal of mine. But I got this in the mail. That's a grail piece of art. Right. You know, I've been talking about original art a lot, um, how I believe it has the, the best long-term sustained value. So right. I'm really trying to consolidate my collection this year and move funds into original artwork. So this is uh, the first piece that I picked up this year. Super happy to get it. I should have curiosity. What's on the back of it? Did they put anything on the back? they put stamps or anything? Or is it just a clear canvas? Um, usually, it, they use special board like paper right, right. for it. Usually blank. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, they, they sometimes they stamped I, it. Or, no. He, but he put his name on the front. Yes. His yes. signature on the front. Yes. He's, he's so signed this on front. And I'm going to. The color is insane. Yeah. It's, beautiful. it's just a beautiful. Uh, where's the card? Right there. There's a card right there. Yeah. You can see that. Um, so I'm going to skip the frame this week. So we'll see. That will look pretty cool uh, later yeah. on. Someone's already like curious about buying it. <laughs> Would you? So it's, uh, I'd have to hit. Like, um, I the guy who sold it to me would be really mad if I turned around and flipped it. So unless I got a huge bag of money, probably. <laughs> I I okay, but I want to be known as the guy. Like I want, I want to be the Marshall Vogel of nineteen ninety two Marvel masterpieces. You know what I mean? I mean? And we saw the video that we have with Joe from Got Baseball. Joe wishes he had more of this. Yes, yes. He makes yes. a comment about he wishes he had more. 90s pop culture marvel stuff to me it is the best there, to me the premiere sets in the 90s there's going to be three of them there's going to be and i have all the other sheets right you here do? you can't see well you can kind of see it. the 1990 the marvel universe, universe that was big during the pandemic is the, the, the set that, that started, started it all. all right okay the 92 x-men this is all that's the right X -Men. this is basically jim lee artwork right so it's beautiful set and then the 92 masterpiece to me, those are the three best sets of the 90s for Marvel. And that's what basically is the foundation of every Marvel collection. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so anyways, cool. I got that. Super happy about that. Um, I kind of have a bug for it now. I might be trying to get more of these. We'll see. Somebody's offering me another piece, but uh, it's just a lot of money. You know, these things aren't cheap. You know, this, I'll tell you right now, I paid, um, maybe I shouldn't say it. Okay. Uh, but I paid thousands of dollars for this. Okay. Okay, yeah. so they're not cheap. It's not like it's not, it's not like they cost like five hundred bucks or anything like that. You know what I mean? Are you gonna get that like frame? Yes. Okay. So with these, okay, like a special frame. With these, you have to have custom frame, museum, UV protected glass, wow, um, acid free mat, all that kind of stuff. That's how you properly display this. But again, going back to what I was kind of pitching the idea last week is imagine if. You know, there was a way to slab these where they're in yeah, right. acrylic like this, right? Um, and then it gave you a nice little label of the artist, what year it was created, whether it's painting, uh, pencil, ink, whatever. Just make it easy for people to understand. And you could, you know, it's preserved and you could play it, right? Imagine if there was a, a way to do that. So put it something like that. I think that would be really cool. Really so cool. maybe... Maybe one day I'll see. Will do that right now. No, but you know, 
We'll see. We'll see if they steal my idea or if I, if I can find the right people to partner with. Maybe I'll start my own. That'll give them a lot of business. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I think we're going to get there at some point. Um, but, you know, we'll see if I can ever get that business off the ground. Okay. Anything else you want to talk about before getting into no, the main topic? Well, no, one. I love okay. it. I love it. Main topic of discussion tonight, guys. Um, hobby doom scroll. All right. Yes. So, and I did not know what that name was until I Googled it before I posted it. Okay. So, if you don't know what doom scrolling is, it's just a term that people say when you're on your phone, right? And um, you see nothing but uh, bad uh, articles, you know? Right. It's just bad things that happen. Regarding uh, things of bad faith. Right. And it's just like constantly, just like, you're looking at bad things that are happening and you're, you feel bad. Right. But you can't stop. You're just scrolling. I heard all these posts, like, once you, like, get that into your algorithms, it's everywhere. It's like, it's the end of the world. It's the end of the world. It's the world. Yeah. This so, sucks. This sucks. Yeah. So for me, I've got this bad habit where at night I'm scrolling my phone before I go to bed. Yeah, I, know, I see you do it. It's a bad habit. You, know, you shouldn't do it, but we I don't do it. it. I do it, too. I'm, and I'm it. Um, I... I get a lot of my, I try to get a lot of my news from X. I read different right, articles right. and things like that just to kind of stay up to date. And we're talking about real world things. Politics, right, right. world event, economy. You know, I get that stuff. I just kind of look at uh, stuff on X. And lately, uh, lately, I mean, it probably happens a lot, but more so lately, it's been affecting me where I've been scrolling. You know, because we're in the election year and all this other stuff that happened, a couple of wars, back or right economy all these things yeah, what's next <laughs> going through these things right and um it's starting to make me depressed yeah. you know what i mean or anxious. yes uh, my anxiety is, is rising when we're doing this so to calm myself down um i'll go look at ebay and okay. i'll search stuff on ebay that'll and, make you happier again yes <laughs> i look at i look at ebay and i look at heritage auction okay because they have um, apps that you can use, you know. I don't know why these other options. Like, they're old enough too. Do they have an app? Yes. Oh, you have to use it. Yeah. Yeah. You bought all that? No, I just use it on my my computer. No, that's the hair. Oh, So, uh, yeah. so uh, Golden has it, but like here, just yeah. not all I know of. Yeah. So I, I'll when I when I'm like scrolling through eBay looking for rare stuff, I get a sense of calm. You know what I mean? <laughs> it centers me. It like. Calms me down where I feel like, okay. That's your pacifier. Okay. Okay. The world's not on fire. Uh, this is cool. Let me look into this. Let me dive down the rabbit hole and collect. This, this brings you joy. Yes. Um, and that's why I'm in the hobby. That's why everybody's in the hobby as a distraction. You just said that last week about this game. From the, from the real world and stuff like that. But sometimes in the hobby, we can have him scrolling also. You know? Yeah, we we discussed that many times we didn't call it doom scrolling at the time but we just talked about the uh yeah the uh, keyboard warriors or whatever or just people constantly their posts or clickbait is always about negativity in the hobby and i'm not talking about the trash content no, no. i'm not talking about the trolls that just talk shit about people but, but when I, you start seeing it you want to know more about it so you start clicking on other stuff like dealing it. with it here's someone else's POV. not even know what they talk about I'm just talking about just like in general lines. You know, when bad things happen, other content creators highlight, oh my God, this yes. this um, breaker stole this car, or Tops screwed up with this, or, you know, whatever. Uh, this car got damaged in the mail. I can't believe this, right? <laughs> so there is scrolling within the hobby too, right? Um, so I, I just kind of. I just kind of wanted to bring this up. I don't really have a perspective on this or a lesson to do anything like that. But for me, what what I, I use the hobby for is to get away from the real world. Okay. Because, yes. I mean, let's be honest, guys. The real world is is can be really messed up. Yes. You know, we like so true. Like you don't. I don't know. It's it's hard to say. This is what we get a little bit of our conversation. But if you are if you're paying attention to anything, right? If you watch. Any type of mainstream media, or you follow any type of mainstream personality that reports on things, uh, it's always bad. It's always bad, and yeah. no matter like what side you're on, it's not going to be thirty minutes of good news. Yeah, whether whether, <laughs> whether you're on one side or the other yeah. side, it's bad. 
Yes. It's bad. It's just it's just a bunch they, of they want to appear to you on both ends. Yeah, and if you if you believe it, everything it gives you a lot of crazy anxiety. Like I used to believe everything. The news. I used to be naive enough that I believe everything that the news said because it's the news, right? Right. They're reporting on it. It must be real. And it wasn't until like pre uh, pre pandemic election year where I started to see that. Wait a second, these things are very skewed towards a certain narrative. Right. And then I kind of woke up and I was like, all right, maybe not everything is real. Maybe I should watch multiple sources and make my own opinion about things, right? right? And not just blindly believe. And Google what, it. <laughs> yeah, what, whatever it is. Because a lot of this stuff is very skewed. And, and it's it, it gets to be really like, like it's almost like they like these news outlets, they, they were stupid, you know, in terms of how they, they want us to um, get upset about things, right? So there's that. Then if um, I've been traveling a lot lately, you know, like we're going to different countries and you really see how different um, people live when you're in a different country mm -hmm. and you like when I'm in Japan, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's problems going on in Japan too, where people live there and they have their own problems that they think about. Right. But I'm isolated from all that. I don't know anything about what's going on in that country. I'm just there to enjoy myself. But I can compare that experience to how I feel when I'm in America, right? And all the things that we have going on here. And it's different. It's very different, right? So I feel like, you know, I for me, I really use that hobby, the hobby to kind of get away from things. You can't completely get away. You have to know what's going on. Right. We're in an election year. You have to know about that kind of stuff. You have to know about how the economy is doing. We're adults. Right. You know, not everybody is is um, adults <laughs> is as old as us. You know, we're in our I'm in 40s, you're in 50s. Not everybody's in that age range. Not everybody has a family. Not everybody no. has responsibilities like us, right? But for, for our demographic, we are. So we have to pay attention to that stuff, right? We have to know what's going on in the world. We have to know what's going on in the economy and things like that. Um, but if, like, it gets to be too much sometimes, dude. You know, for me, anyways, like, I just, it gets to be really too much sometimes. So I really use the hobby as an escape from that where I can just... I can just look at something, and and maybe it's naive, but when I look at something like, like, um, you know, like this, right, like this this piece of artwork, I look at it, and I'm just like, there's nothing bad that can come out of this. You know what I mean? It's just I'm just happy to own it. It's worth money. I can turn around and sell it later, probably, you know. But I can enjoy it. You know what I mean, I don't have to think about whether I got ripped off or whether um, it's going to lose value. Or whether something's gonna, you know, people are gonna want to cancel me for having this or whatever, you know. So I just, I just feel like that is is the the main objective of the hobby. It's giving us that that level of escape. But mm. if you're not careful with how with people that you follow, the content that you consume, that even in the hobby you can doom scroll. You can follow the wrong people. You can see the wrong topics, and not everything is going to affect you, right? It's not right. as serious as like what's happening in the world, but you can get pissed off. Yeah, I see a lot of people get pissed off over stupid things, right? Things that have nothing to do with them at all, uh, but they'll get pissed off because somebody's making content about it, right? Or they'll get this, um, they'll get a certain perspective where they just they're just uh, very distrusting about things, right? You know what I mean? They don't want to do business with somebody. They don't want to break online. They don't want to rip packs. They don't want to buy certain products or whatever because they, 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 they become so distrusting based on the type of content that they consume. So I just think that we, you know, we have to be aware of that to an extent. There's some people view it as entertainment. I think, I don't think it's necessarily entertaining. Some people view that stuff as that, but you have to be very careful because if you don't know any better, you can fall into the habit of just being uh, you know, influenced by that type of content. You know, sort of living in fear. Yeah, yeah. I call it I call it um, having a false grievance planted in your mind, right? So you could watch these things that, like, like for example, like if you don't even collect baseball cards and you, you watch, watch the stuff they're saying about what's happening with 
the pops release and all that stuff, you could just get upset about something that has nothing to do with you. Right. You know what I mean? And then you can become distrusting about fanatics or this or that. Right. Or, you know, when they talk, when certain guys talk shit about other guys in the hobby and things like that, ridiculous stuff. It happens to me all the time. People could be not following me at all. They could not be, uh, uh, they, they probably don't even know who I am, but they would get upset. And that's the profession of you. Yes. Because they get upset because they saw something somebody Most else regarding about you. So, you know, you just have to be careful about that. I hate that. that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, you know, it, it, can, it can fuck with your mind, right? Yes. And for me personally, let's bring it back to me here. Um, <laughs> if, if, if this, Escape this. If the hobby for me becomes uh, another form of doom scrolling, where it's not fun anymore. It's like, yeah. where do I go? What do I do? What, what, what am I gonna do if I if I can't if I don't have the hobby to um, escape from the world? What am I gonna do? Yeah, what are you gonna do? I don't know. Just go to Disneyland every day. Buy a motorcycle and start riding a you bike. Did, you did have a motorcycle. I did, but I won't do that anymore. Okay. Yeah, I won't do that anymore. What else? Because you I, have family. <laughs> what else can I do? Pick up golfing? No, I'm never gonna golf. Oh god, I can see you playing golf. What else? Play poker? No, I'm not gonna lose my money. Um, oh gosh, no. What, there's not. There's literally like, what? Become a painter? Maybe. You know, be a painter. How's your painting skills? Not very good. Um, but uh, you know, what am I? I don't have the hobby. What am I gonna do? You know what I mean? Like this is my life. This is my life. You know what I mean? And uh, I just I and. That's why I kind of diversify. I have all these different things that I, I like, but even in every in every hobby community, there's doom scrolling. You know, in comics, especially comics. Really? Comics have had a big hit a lot lately because of all the scandals that they happen. Toys, um, same thing. Uh, toys, not so much, but you know, it could be. I, people in the toy community complain about stupid shit. They, oh, they complain about stupid shit. Okay, <laughs> I'll give you an example. Okay, there's this toy that there's this wrestling figure that came out like, for company of uh, Kevin Von Erich and, or Kerry Von Erich, one of those guys. Recently, yeah. Okay. And um, when you open it up, the quality was not good, where the legs break if you pose it too much. Is it new? Um, a new figure? Yeah. Oh my so, gosh. so they sold the so the company sold it at a, at a discount for display only, right? If you want to keep it in the box or keep it in the display, but you can't play with it. Even though toys are being marketed to grown ass men who buy them as collectibles, they said that don't play with them, right? And people were still complaining about that. Oh, I can't play with my action figure or whatever, even though these are grown ass men. So even the, the toy community is really snarky at some times, uh, if you ask me. Um, but every toy, every every collectible community has some type of right, 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 right. And once you once you see it, you know it's hard to unsee. Once you realize what's going on uh, and become aware of it, it's hard to not. It's hard to not see it and and not want to stay away. From it. Right, right. So again, if I, if I if like if I you know if I don't have the hobby right for that purpose of escape from the world, what am I going to do? Right. You know what I mean, I have to find a different hobby. Um, which maybe I play video games. I play that. But side note, when I play video games, that was like one of the most toxic experiences of my life. Well, because no one ever saw you again? Because I would play for like six to eight oh, hours. Yeah. I'd play from like like eight o'clock to like four AM <laughs> online and I would pop so much shit. I think uh, you, you had like headset on. Oh everything? yeah. Oh yeah. Like, I played Halo, I played Madden, I played whatever. Everything? Oh you know, all kinds of genres of uh games. I'll, I'll start, mainly Halo is what I love to play. Oh wow. And okay. I would oh my god, I would I would make little kids cry. Because I would talk so much. How many years did you play Halo? Oh, it must have been like eight years. Oh, you, you know? played that many years. Eight years wow. before I got out of it, you know? And how'd you get out of it? Um, I I just, you know, I uh, started working and then I was trying to like date and meet people and, you know, just like. <laughs> I can't play and meet with them. Yeah, it just uh, it, it wasn't a priority in my life. Okay. Yeah. You know, it was mostly like, mostly like college, so, like high school, college years after a little bit right, of college. Right. Um, but yeah, that was a crazy time. But I, now I don't play anymore, you know, except for like on my phone, I play a couple games here and there. But I don't. Really Are you do scared of play again? Do you get addicted or what? Kind of, kind of. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, I can't do that to my wife. What else? So what else am I gonna do? Right? You know, like buy buy a classic car and work on it. You know, I don't know. I don't know anything about no, cars. No, yeah. So, anyways, any thoughts on that? 
No, no, I, I agree with everything you you say. I mean, it's just you ever find yourself doing that? Yes, you I mean, no, we're all uh, victims of it here. You just get stuck in. We're humans. We. Uh, I okay. Can I? Can we talk about? We want to hear more. Little, about can we talk a little bit about a conspiracy? I just I don't want to get too deep into this because oh, no, what, I don't know what about. it will lead to. Okay, what? but I've been <laughs> I've been like so like nervous lately about. Um, directed energy weapons. You ever heard of that? Directed energy weapons? Yes. Okay. Directed energy weapons that are starting fires and burning certain places that are being targeted, causing anarchy. And I've been thinking to myself, okay. This is something that's happening here in the U.S.? I don't want to get into it. If I tell you about well, it. You got me freaked out now. If I tell you about it, I'm going to. I'm going to sound crazy. I'm going to sound crazy. But I'm making me more. Is this something from James? No, this okay. is no. Okay, but I've been I've been reading up about this. Okay. Oh my gosh. You're going down the conspiracy hole. Here, so let me just, I'm just going to tell you a short story about like what, how it's influencing me. Okay. Is this real or This is real to, okay. to an extent. Okay. To an extent. But I've been thinking to myself, okay, if there's directed energy weapons being used on us, to burn certain strategic structures and it causes a blackout in my city and that blackout causes uh, a mass panic and rioting how am i going to protect myself right so i was thinking to myself okay i need to go buy this this weapon i need to go buy this amount of ammunition i need to go buy this oh, amount of supplies oh, right oh, and i was seriously thinking about this the other day and i was like okay tomorrow i'm going to go to you know this place to get these supplies and this and that and i was like oh my god oh my god you know and it all came from doom scrolling you know what i mean uh, but first do you even have an earthquake survivor kit i'm prepared okay okay, okay. Sure. i'm borderline prepper okay, okay. <laughs> i'm prepared my girlfriend has all of that but we don't have any ammunition and guns yes so but i was thinking sure. about so when i when i go down this rabbit hole I, of, of Anxiety, anxiety thinking about yeah, those things. Anxiety. Anxiety. Is, is, and if you read these things, you probably think it too. But I was, I was going okay. to. something you saw on YouTube or X or what? Yes, both, both, both. Oh, okay. It's everywhere. If you know, if you look for it, you will find these. I things. know it's going to be like freaked out. So, anyways, that's why I have to tell myself, stop, stop doing that. You're, you're getting crazy. Go to eBay. Go to eBay. <laughs> Go to eBay and find a, find a one-on-one. Find a one-on-one and, you know, buy this, buy that. And, and because, because of that, and then buy some stuff last week, I probably, probably shouldn't have bought. You, know? <laughs> you were compulsive buying, spending yes. because you were having anxiety over these yes. heat sensing. Some people, some people um, <laughs> eat, you know, when they get anxiety. Some people eat, some people drink. I know. I, I, before... I saw my pathologist. Trust me, I was eating the hell out of. I buy things years. on eBay. I buy things on eBay. I got a long list of watch items that are like buy it now or best offer. And whenever I feel angry, anxiety, or happy or something like that, I'll go on my watch list and I'll be like, you know what? I need this. I need that. And I end up buying buying a bunch of stuff. And that works as Prozac for you? Yeah, it gets my mind off of it. It gets my mind off of it. You know. It's not good. It's not good for my wallet or my bank account, but um, <laughs> it makes me like, why did I just do that? It gets it gets my mind off of things. You know oh what I mean? Goodness. It gets my mind. So, anyways, if uh, so that's my that's my lesson for you guys today is if you find yourself doom scrolling, um, whether it's outside of the hobby or especially inside the hobby, just go to eBay and go buy something. You know, oh, is that all this? Okay? Uh, because that's what the hobby's for. It's supposed to be an escape from. Reality, it's not supposed to be another source of anxiety uh, in your life. Okay, gotcha. anything you want to add to that before we get to comments? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm scared to, to find these articles about these energy. I'll tell uh, you offline. Oh, I'll tell gosh. you offline. If I tell you, if I tell you online, people are gonna, I can already see it now. The great curator goes off the deep end, he's crazy, conspiracy theorist, you know, tin hat, everything like that. You know, no, that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> The trolls, the trolls will have a field the day. Okay. <laughs> the troll there. Yeah, this is my little troll friend. Okay. Okay, let's get to the comments, guys. Let's get to the comments. Oh, we're already there. Yeah. The comments, yeah. guys. We appreciate everybody. Comments. 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 Mark the collector. Mark the collector. Happy, Happy Tuesday, party people. Oh, your your out, Mark. 
Zuck Zuck Chilling is always like we heard. Hello. McCracken, I made a live show. What's up, guys? Yes, we made a live show. Good job. Papa Jim, will we see you next week for once? Did we miss you in Dallas last time? We're going to see you next week, buddy. And Papa Jim goes, the podcast I really don't need to be listening to. <laughs> it's okay. My shrimp pays for the therapy. <laughs> LOL. Hope you guys are doing well tonight. Yes, we are. Thank you, Papa Jim. Michael Alcorn Grant says, says, looking good, everyone. Carlos, good evening, Curator Army. Yeah, rise and shine, Curator Army, man. Let's do it. Carlos, how much are the mystery packages? Oh, so we answered this in the beginning. Hey. Uh, I just want to highlight again, in case you weren't here, Carlos. Uh, you set the budget. So if you want to, one of my um, famous, world famous mystery packages, send me a DM, you give me your budget, and I'll work within that budget. To. Yeah. You probably, I think he's already done it. <laughs> probably. Uh, uh, Carlos, again, what's in the back room premise sounds good. Yes, thank you. That's it regarding our show, our interview shows. My crack in heading to San Diego uh, with my nephew's wedding next week after Nashville. So crack is also at the Nashville show. That's where he's from, Nashville? No, I think he's from like Ohio or something. Okay. Yeah. We'll have to go to Nashville for the show. Jim L., uh, do you feel slightly not getting a top <laughs> influencer card? Always. You you feel slightly? No, no, I don't. But I'm sure I'm really talking for you. I've got the I've got the ultimate card right here. Okay, these guys may have some stupid top baseball card, but I've got the PMG card right here. So no, <laughs> no, I don't feel slightly. He's got them all. Look at he's got all his cards out. Yes, right but I am happy for all those guys. They get a cool card, uh, so that's pretty cool for them. Uh, Denny cards. I bought a mystery box of WWE cards from the curator. Correct? Yes. Good job. And have the fiddle down, Denny. <laughs> don't ask him. Don't no, ask him. No. Um, let me see. Uh, what we got next here? Let's see. Uh, hold on. I got to get through this here. <laughs> uh, 25 Perez says, hi, everyone. What's up, buddy? Good to hear from you again. Next. Who do we have? Trader Grips, Adam says, this looks really sharp. You guys recently acquired a new camera setup? No, I just didn't put the camera that we're using the main camera on Wi-Fi because I think Dan's Wi-Fi is slow and it's clogging up the speeds of our computers. So I tried some different based on my knowledge at home, back to my place. But Kraken, I think this same ball SPC to keep it out of Fnatic. Yeah. Probably right. What do you think, Dan? Yeah, I think I think it's a strategic move. To take it off the table, you know. You don't want you don't want those guys to be too big, right? Because I feel like if Fanatics is too big, do they have influence over collectors, like the well, collectors universe? The how company? could you not? Right? How could you not? Yeah, yeah. You know, so good move for PSA. I mean, for collectors. Mm -hmm. Collectors universe. Uh, after collects, Christian Collecticon was nice in Dallas. What was that last week? Yeah. Oh, how did the show, speaking of Dallas, how did the um, pop culture uh, version of Dallas Star Show do? Uh, I haven't heard anything about it. Um, yeah. Vestabilia? I don't like that name. Can I Can no, I just I say like that? Because I know. If, that sounds like you're going to get money there. Kyle, yeah. Kyle, if you're watching or one of Kyle's guys, I don't like that name. Investabilia? It sounds like Investacard guy. Remember that guy, Eddie, Investicard, and nobody liked him? For a pop culture show to be called Investabilia, it just makes no sense to me. Uh, so I think the name I think the name needs a little bit of work. Yeah, if anybody went to that uh, show a couple weeks ago, let us know how it was. It was actually the weekend of the Super Bowl, right? Mm -hmm. Call it like the Dallas pop culture show. You know? Yeah. Keep that Dallas theme because he's got – The Dallas pop culture show. Yeah, his, his shop is called the Dallas Card Shop. And then it was called the Dallas Card Show. So why not call it the Bourbon? Yeah, why not call it the Dallas Pop Culture Show? You know, instead of Card Show, Dallas Pop Pop Culture Show. You know? Did you go Papa Jim? Uh, hold on. Who, I got a screen. Let me know. Okay, who's getting that? Christian, did you even go? Now, John Holt again. Let's have a great show, gentlemen. 
That was the dollar ninety nine one we already passed. The crack in the most fun out show last year I had was Collecticon Charlotte. Oh, you're from the Charlotte area or just went there? That's over where I used to grow up. Joseph Champagne, what are your best guesses on new pricing for grading with SGC PSA? Almost a monopoly. Now 15 and 22 now. $40 per card in the future? $50 per card? I don't think so because I feel like they they could do that when there was a gold rush for grading and people were During flipping and people were flipping and making money. So they were essentially and taking more thirsty for grades. They were taking um their piece of the pie. Because these flippers were making so much money. They're taking they're taking their little piece of the pie with the grading. But they've lowered prices um, since then because there's been less grading and the market hasn't been so crazy. So I just don't see them raising prices. But another thing that you have to consider is when SGC was their competitor and they're pricing at fifteen dollars across the board. Uh, you know, you don't have to. Compete with them. But now you don't have to compete with them anymore. So I think that I think that probably the prices will get closer together. Um, Maybe PSA will go down a little bit. Maybe SGC will go up a little bit, but I think they'll be closer together. Okay. But again, it's just one less competitor that you've got to, you know, try to price match. You know what I mean? And then I think Beckett charges more than both of them for their yeah, stuff. I think so. Right? Yes. And then CGC, I think I think CGC is competitive, but... They're, they're kind of yeah, similar to SGC. I don't know how many people are using CGC, though, um, outside of, like, Pokemon cards. And how much is tag? About the same price, too? I don't really know. I don't, I don't know. know so, yeah. <laughs> Tag doesn't sponsor us, so we don't know. Uh-oh. <laughs> Tag, do you listen? Yes. Do we got next? Me one? No, it's not. Okay. Emmanuel, shooting two slaps back in the studio. Can I get a shout out for my daughter, Margo, born this past Sunday? Thank you, guys. She was born this past Sunday? Oh, wow. No, this is. She's, well, a, she's a newbie. And I, she was born. Yeah, let us know yes. if you're a first time dad. Uh, congratulations on that. Um, if it's happy birthday, happy birthday, um, Margo. Happy birthday, Margo. I have a respect for all parents because I, you know, you, you probably can't relate to this, but having a child is very difficult. You know, oh, I can imagine. very difficult. So I always have respect for other parents in the hobby it's because, parent, parents. because I know how difficult it is. So anybody that has, especially a little kid like mine. Um, much respect to you. Yeah, almost all my friends have kids, so I know how it is. That's why I don't have any. Uh, Cameron Basir, what's your uh, Grail G.I. Joe piece, man? Ooh, my Grail G.I. Joe piece, huh? I probably have to say it would be, right now, it'd be a high-grade um, 1985 Snake Eyes. I think that would be my Snake Eyes. Yeah, 1985. So there's, there's Three versions of Snake Eyes that they made in the eighties. I have an really? eighty. I have an eighty nine up there, right, right there. Um, eighty two is the first one and the most expensive. But the Snake Eyes that everybody knows from cartoons, from the comic books, everything yeah. is the eighty five version. Okay. So for me, like a high high grade, like an I mean, revised look from yeah. eighty two to eighty five. Yes, like okay. an eighty five an eighty five plus FA eighty five plus version of the. A version two of Snake Eyes would be my grill right now. But so for the most part, the 82 uh, series is the most expensive? Yes. 82, uh, yeah, 82 series because it's the first series. First series, right. Yeah. And it was just pretty much like a flagship. Yeah. Although, yeah. you know, I, I have like certain vehicles that I want, but the problem is the vehicles are so big that I just don't think I could ever get graded versions of them, you know? I, I think I saw in that Star Wars celebration. They're too hard to display. Like flat was big. So if you look up there, you guys can't see it. But if you look up there in the back, where it says G.I. Joe, you see that G.I. Joe right there behind the uh, purple X Men? Yes, yes. There's a That's actually a graded um, set of G.I. Joe's. Oh, yeah, you showed that one before, I believe. Yeah. That thing is huge. Oh, no, that's gigantic. I can't even properly display it. It's like a giant board game in there. In fact, look at any of these boxes that I have up there. Imagine if those were encapsulated in, in um, you know, acrylic. They'd be even bigger than what they are now. There's just no good way to display it. Unless I've got, like, a huge, huge room where I can set these things up properly, I don't think I'll ever become a vehicle uh, 
uh, how much Brady do you call the slaps on them that big? A lot. Uh, uh, figure. I just tell you, like I just tell you this. From my first experience reading with figures, so I sent three of these X Men figures. It cost like one hundred and fifty dollars, basically. Just no, one hundred. One hundred and twenty-five dollars. Just for this size? Yes. Is it that much? Yes, it's expensive, dude. Plus shipping. So you know, all in, I'll probably be like one hundred and forty. A lot of money. Yeah. And that's what PSA. Yeah. So oh. I don't know how feasible. This is the cheapest. Yes. Yeah. So that that's got to be like a lot, yeah. Did you buy it that way? I did. Okay, I did. Good. You just figured that overhead. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. The great the toy grading market still has to figure out how to um, make it easier for people to get in. That's a lot of money. Yeah, but I think I think a lot of people will eventually move to that space. Okay, we got next here, Cameron. 94 Marvel Masterpieces is so good, too, right? It is. Andrew, just uh, watch some animal videos and listen to some classic calming music. But I hear you, Dan. There's a lot of negativity and depressing news happening. The media and social media is not our friend. No, because they, they thrive on that. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like um, a double-edged sword. Like, so... so Obviously, because I have a social media presence and we get a lot of opportunities, we do social media, right? Yes. But that means that I have to constantly be on social media and I have to see things that I don't want to see, you know, and I have to subject myself to people, you know, who I don't want to associate with and things like that. So it's a double-edged sword. But yes, um, animal videos do help. You know, I, I watch Something a lot of bloggers. Yeah, I watch uh, I watch a lot of like funny puppy videos, kitten videos, things oh, like that. Oh, my love. So she follows so many dogs on Instagram. That stuff helps for sure. I wish I wish it was all like that, dude. I just I just wish we could get rid of all this stuff because, man, just like some of the things um, I see. Yeah, but if the news or like reality shows or anything said, oh, today's a good, everybody got along with each other, everything was a good day. People would quit watching. You you have to have like conflict uh, to get ready. That's the problem, dude. Like I don't and know. That's with with anything and like on TV. Yeah, I hate how real or fiction. I hate how it's like that. I just uh, I don't know, and I feel like we've gotten into this crazy habit um, where I'll tell you this. Okay, I used to love to watch movies. I used to watch movies. I used to watch TV. You know, I used to watch three hours of Monday Night Raw. No problem. Right, right. Every day I would watch like four hours of TV, you know, or movies or something. But when I got heavy on social media, my attention span really narrowed down to like 30 seconds, 60 second clips where I'm just like scrolling. If it doesn't have my attention, if it doesn't have my attention in the first 10 seconds, swipe, 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 swipe. Oh, or first five seconds, swipe, 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 right? Now it's the point where it's hard for me to watch a movie because I get bored. I have to watch a movie and I have to be on my, my phone as I'm watching the movie. Yeah, you no, know? so you can't do that. If you, you got to be fully engaged in the movie to enjoy it, you can't. But that came, I can't watch a movie at home. That came from I like that. from being on social media. I know. So I don't know. It's a weird effect on society that our attention spans have been like I know have been reduced to. Five to ten seconds, essentially. You know what I mean. Um, so, I mean, part of me, honestly, part of me just wants to like take a break from social media for like a while and just disconnect and do all these things. Diet. Social media diet. But I can't. It's hard for me to do that because we I have know. we have all the social media. We have all these things that we do, it's right? Kind of it, right? Yeah, and um, I would never, I would never want to um, look like. I'm taking extended time because I don't want the trolls to think that they win. <laughs> you know, I, I've sworn, oh, no I've, good. I've sworn, I've sworn on my life that I will be the last man standing. So I'm kind of stuck in this perpetual <laughs> hamster wheel. You'll be gone for like two weeks. They'll be wondering what's going on. They'll be speculating. Uh, Denny Carr, you can create your own Instagram feed. Hide or mute the creators who stress you out and like the creators. You do like like, like me. Oh, well, you do that, Denny. I, I, I muted. I muted right. Denny a long time ago. Uh, sure. you did? <laughs> uh, 
uh, Diddy card, kidding aside, there's always a way to make the algorithms work for you, not against you. So, yes, um, but it's weird because I try to follow. Me too, and I don't get them. I still get the people you I know, don't care about. I try to follow, like, the big guys that do a lot of reporting, you know, uh, guys on Twitter or X, uh, Instagram. I don't want to name the accounts, but they, they do sorry. a lot of they do a lot of reporting. They, they often do good stuff. You know? News reporting? Yeah, they tell you about the new releases. Oh, the hobby. Yeah, they tell you about the new releases. They tell you, oh, this big card got pulled. Oh, this big auction happened. But they also do a lot of negative stuff. You know what I mean? So it's like, do I really want to cut them all off? Or like, just trust me, since day one, it's always been that way. If you just talk about good stuff, people will tune out. You lose them. But and you, I think they know that. Tell, it's always been that way. We were always even taught out in, back in school. You gotta have, you gotta some, have drama. some drama. People engage. Yeah. 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 And they know that. Yeah. And as a content creator, yeah. I feel like, okay, that's part of the strategy. Yeah. Right? Uh, but, you know, it gets annoying. Yin and Yang there, right? Yeah. Andrew, uh, yeah, muting people isn't bad or even just deleting the app from your phone. <laughs> have you done that, Andrew? Uh, Diddy cards, false grievances. Applause. Applause. Papa Jim, uh, Dan must have a double of what he's drinking tonight. Just water. <laughs> like, you just have water. Are you yeah. not open? Uh, no, I just, I just didn't feel like drinking. Yeah. It's a rarity, Jim. Uh, donkeys. Uh, people who keep consuming negative content eventually get sick of it because it's an inability unless they unless they themselves are okay with being miserable. Mm. I think a lot of people are, uh, ever since the pandemic, um, like being miserable. There's a lot of people I've noticed on social media that always do either, they, they hate everybody, complain about everybody, or they complain about themselves. They're never happy about themselves. And they want to, like, let everybody know. Mm -hmm. uh, Papa Jim, yes. I will see you in Dallas next weekend, guys. Looking forward to seeing you all. Look forward to it, Jim. Andrew, I was honestly going to say, hope the trolls didn't get to you. <laughs> no, the trolls never get to me. Fuck those guys. Okay, <laughs> it's the it's the, the news dudes. They get to me, you know, like the guys that actually report news that I see, and I just end up doom scrolling. It's crazy. But they haven't done news on you. No, why would okay, they? Good. You know, a uh, diamond <laughs> card collector. Hey guys, I hope you both are doing well. Yes, we oh, are. This You're is doing even. well. This Steven, the guy that has all those crazy super fractors. <laughs> oh, that's him? Yeah. Oh, what's his, crazy, his crazy super fractor collection. Diamond card collector. He is a diamond. Okay, so that gets to all uh, the wow. comments. Yeah, we got through that pretty quickly. We're we're running out of time here. Okay, anything, any last minute things you want to talk about? Uh, uh, no. who, let's see who's going to acquire what this week. <laughs> we may be back on tomorrow again. Who knows? Uh, no, that's it. Like I said, I will be at Collecting Con in Los Angeles at the LA Convention Center this weekend. I don't know what the booth number it is on top of my head. I will post it on Instagram. So if you follow me, don't follow me. Follow me now on Instagram and Moral Parts. I will be with the show locator. Maybe Dan will pop up and uh, make an appearance. But like I said, if, you're, if you go to where the stage is, because the band lived this morning, and maybe the, the guy who sees the Pokemon thing. Y'all know lit for my own worst fit. Kind of sound like blinking. Kind of, yeah. Uh, we'll be the left booth of the stage, chasing the stage. So go to the left, you'll see me there. Come say hi if you're there. And then, like I said, next week we'll be at Dallas. Uh, yeah, no other announcement for me, but I'll give a teaser. I may, a be, teaser. I may be making a an interesting announcement in the next few Ooh. weeks. In the next few weeks, okay, guys? He's so, quitting the hobby. But we will see. Stay tuned for that. That's a teaser, and it's either gonna, it's either gonna be very um, interesting to a lot of people, or it's gonna piss a lot of people off. So we'll Ooh. see. We will see. Uh, okay. Well, what if it's gonna piss anybody off? It's gonna piss somebody off. Yeah. So, anyways, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us tonight. Uh, we appreciate it. Go check out our latest video of touring got baseball cards with Joe Davis it's on YouTube. Oh, also another thing, we are also. Uh, we do podcasts. You can listen to us in the car or when you're at the gym. All the links to all our podcast links, streaming, are down below in the description. So check that out. Yeah. Appreciate, Appreciate it, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye.
Two nerds wishing they could grow body hair Comics, cards, and toys Nothing that 